Can you tell yeah. us a bit more about the process and how you get involved um, it, within the film? At what industry. stage in the filmmaking process, yeah. or how do you get to do a Bond movie? Or how do you get involved in, this, in the filmmaking process? Uh, well, a lot of it depends on the director. I mean, Mark Forster, who did Quantum of Solace, had a very different approach. He wanted me to write music based on, sort of conceptually, based on and impressionistically on things that he was doing for the film. So I'd read the script a few times, and instead of sending me footage of stuff as he was shooting, he got his editors to kind of put montages of characters together. So there was no dialogue, there was no story. Uh, it was just like, this is our main bad guy. His name was Green, so there was, we had a little sort of three-minute uh, sort of like mood reel of this guy in the in the film. So you can get an you get an understanding about who he was and how he moved and what he looked like. Um, and he'd do the same thing with other characters and then with locations as well. And then I would write pieces of music sort of impressionistically based on those things. So we weren't writing to picture, you know, I wasn't writing a theme for Mr. Green, so when he walks in that door, then 12 seconds or 15 frames later he leaves at that, at that point. So it's not constricted by any of that. It was purely creatively. If I write a piece of music that feels like it belongs to him, then it will probably, you know, fit into the film somehow. And so I started providing him with all these... Uh, ideas and then his editors started putting that in the film in places where I normally wouldn't write like that. Um, so that was actually very refreshing, it was very different. Uh, Martin Campbell on, on Casino Royale, um, I started off with the theme that became the song uh, and that was our starting point and we felt like that felt like it was the character of Bond at that point in that film. So um, once everyone knew that they were happy that that was kind of the way it sounded, uh, from that point on then they give you footage you know and you, you decide where music's going to start and stop and the sort of job it should be doing uh, and then you have to write based on the themes that you've written then you write you know to, to fit the picture so it kind of so it, so it sits in it of course that's or, or, or want to change all the time I mean the African chase on the building site and everything at the beginning of Casino Royale when I originally scored it, it was like 11 and a half minutes long you know it took like 10 days of writing almost just to write that and by the time it ends up in the movie it's seven and a half minutes long and obviously if they take <coughs> chunks out of it then you have to try and make the music make sense and it's not always as simple as just ch you know cutting bits out it's like if there's a sentence if someone you know there's an advert over there for Phillips uh, so simplicity is knowing they're getting all the goodness they need now if someone wants that half the length you're either going to have to say it quicker, which is going to make it sound really stupid, or you're going to have to leave words out, which means that it's not going to make sense. So sometimes you have to rewrite the sentence in order to fit the new size, and that's what it's a bit like with music. Is it very instinctive for you, the, 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 the process? Are you, are you sat a, at a piano, tinkering away until something gets inspiration? Where do you yeah. get your spark from? I mean, the, the, it's, it's, it's one of those things. I've, I've always found that most of my best ideas I never feel responsible for because they kind of arrive in my head without me making any effort and some people might say it sounds like that you know but you know when I did the theme for Stargate I was driving down the M1 and I was going past Toddington service station and my brain was absolutely empty and it came it just arrived in my head and there's other there's other things like the, the, the Vespers theme in Casino Royale came from looking at the character, really trying to get underneath her skin and looking into her eyes and finding what her face was doing and putting yourself in that position and trying to find something which was as fragile as it appeared to me underneath the surface. Um, so that was you know those themes. You, some, some, sometimes you have to work at it and sometimes they're gifted to you. Obviously the ones that you're gifted, you, you know, you're extremely grateful for. When I did Independence Day, there was a there was a moment when the aliens turned up right at the beginning of the film, and they were hovering over each of the sort of major capital cities. And this is before they started blowing it up, and everyone was getting frightened. So it was like the arrival of the aliens. So they needed a theme for that. And I was sort of struggling with it. I didn't really know what, what to do. And I had a dream one night that someone had invented a machine which wrote uh, alien invasion theme music. And I went into a shop to have a look at it, and I pressed the button on it, and it played this thing. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Uh, and I woke, I woke up and I wrote it down, and that's what ended up being in the film. <laughs> so you know, it's like sometimes you just don't really feel like you have any responsibility for it. But up to that point, I'd probably been thinking about it for about three months. You know, sometimes your brain just needs to get on with it without you thinking about it too much. You know, that's the advantage of sometimes being asleep and sometimes, you know, going on long drives or long walks. You know, you, just, you can get all the stuff, all the clutter out of the way uh, and just let whatever it is that's gestating in there uh, have a chance to breathe and, and, and be born.